Welcome back to another First Impressions. This time we are taking a look at the Chinese MMORPG Moonlight Blade. I've had a lot of requests to do this one so I finally gave it a try. Streamed it a bit and leveled 3 different characters. I also couldn't find an English patch and I don't think there is one. At least there wasn't when this video was uploaded. Now Moonlight Blade was developed and published by Tencent and I also heard that Nexon will be publishing this game for Korea. It went into closed beta in May of 2015 and went into open beta this year, 2016. The game is free to play in China and features a very unique combat system. Now before we dive into this first impressions and early game review, keep in mind that this is all my opinion. I haven't experienced every feature or the end game of Moonlight Blade. I'm also playing the game in Chinese so some of the things I go over in this video could change. For some first impressions I play a few hours, some I play a few days, and in this case I played for about a day. To start things off, this game is beautiful. If you have seen trailers or even the end game graphics, they look amazing. They remind me a lot of Black Desert, and it has a very realistic feel to it. Currently there are 8 different classes to choose from. Only one is gender locked. It is a class that uses an umbrella and a sword. She has healing abilities as well, so it's a very versatile character. For some reason, I was under the impression I'd be able to try all the classes. I was kind of wrong. I was only allowed to create two characters, so I selected the sword class that uses an eagle or hawk to swoop down during some of its skills and damage the enemies. And another blade wielding class that moves pretty fast and felt a bit more difficult than the first. This one was my favorite. But I was able to quickly delete my first character so for the third class I chose the Puppeteer, which looks amazing. A class that uses a puppet. What is this, Naruto? Now the character creation in this game at first glance looks amazing. You have tons of presets to choose from and when I say tons I mean damn. There are several options here and it's similar to Black Desert's customization when it comes to sliders and having the freedom to move different parts of the face. But then you find out there is no customization when it comes to the body. I checked every box and even had my friends try and they told me there is no body option. When it comes to the hair you can only have black hair as well. Now from being in game I do believe I saw a cash shop or some type of system that lets you preview hairstyles where I did actually see some color. So maybe you can't change your hair color unless you get it by the cash shop which would probably make quite a bit of money in a free to play game that limits your character customization. After making your character they hit you with this really cool cutscene, I guess telling you the story of the game. And then they place you in a small town and shortly after you'll be walking a path fighting enemies. They have this really unique way of introducing mechanics to you by having an actual person explain them to you. For me it was two different girls. One that seemed to be cosplaying a character and the other in a schoolgirl outfit. I just found this super unique, and I doubt they would keep something like this if the game ever launched for NA and EU, but who knows. The stream chat found it pretty funny. The movement of your character feels a little stiff, but that's because you move like a traditional tab targeting game. Left click to turn the camera and right click to turn your character. However, they give you three different options. Your usual tab targeting movement as I just mentioned, a dungeon crawler like point and click movement, and action mode. Action mode was unavailable for my puppet class though. The combat is amazing. At first I didn't like it and it felt a bit stiff, but they make up for it with the animations, fast paced movements, and reaction time. It also gets a lot better if you switch to action mode. It seems they put you on the traditional tab targeting mode by default, but luckily I found the action mode because it changed my experience dramatically. The skills go together so well that regardless of the game assisting you with targets it feels really cool. I do think this game would feel a hundred times better if it was true action combat. While it does kind of give us that action combat feel when fighting groups of enemies because you are moving from one target to the next and using a lot of AOEs, it's still tab targeting when it comes down to it. The questing was definitely interesting. It seems like they put a lot into the story. Your character even has dialogue. There's tons of cutscenes, but then there's some scenes that leave you questioning what the hell is going on. Not because I don't understand it, but because they literally have me chasing an enemy down for 5 minutes, jumping through the air, on top of buildings, but you're not in control, so you have to just sit back and watch. They didn't do anything to make it look interesting, and again the movement looked so stiff. I think they could do without these kind of scenes, or get some better camera angles. The auto pathing was nice because it definitely made questing a lot easier as someone who doesn't understand Chinese. You also gear up pretty quickly, and one thing I found interesting was that the helmets were more like hairstyles. I do believe you have the option to change back to your original hair, but I do think that this feature is a bit different. 
Overall, this game seems to stay very realistic. And by that, I don't mean this game is a real life simulator, but from my experience, there was no fantasy. You have these crazy combat animations and super high and might I say sexy jumping, but there was no real mob variation. It's human after human in different costumes and sizes. A horse mount, mountain plains, grass. Personally, I need a bit of fantasy in my game. Dragons, demons, something, but if one game out of the dozen that I play doesn't want to follow that, I guess it's not much of a problem. With the combat, I can see PvP in this game being huge. The combat also uses a composure system, which shows a bar beneath the enemy's health, and this helps decide the outcome of the battle. Composure allows an enemy to block at certain times and prevents them from being knocked down, back, or up. In most games, you know that knocking down an enemy usually leads to a follow-up overkill combo. Composure is reduced as you land hits, and once it's depleted, an enemy cannot block. Composure will regen over time, and each class is given a composure breaking skill, allowing them to deplete this bar much quicker. There is also a system called Killing Intent, which I didn't really get an understanding of, maybe because it's Chinese and maybe because I didn't make it that far, but over time you build Killing Intent as you land hits and high combo counts. You can then use it by using a thing called Clear Mind or Ultimate Skill. Clear Mind is supposed to take you into some kind of 1v1 mid-battle, even if there are enemies around, and it lasts a few seconds, so it's pretty good for buying your allies time with bosses and other enemies. Ultimate Skill uses your killing intent to deal a massive blow. Like I said, I didn't experience these, but it sounds awesome. The game is also open world and has a full weather day and night cycle. The graphics are beautiful and the rain looked so good. Since I play when most of the Chinese players are probably asleep, or because I was only in the beginning zones, the world felt a little dead. Again, it can be because of the reasons that I just listed. You get a mount early on, and what I did like was that this horse felt like an actual horse. The movement, the look, it didn't feel too stiff either. In Revelation Online, when you get your first horse, you just want to put it out of its misery. It's an abomination. The soundtrack is also amazing. So overall, I enjoyed Moonlight Blade, but is it something I'll continue to play on the Chinese servers? As of right now, no. The only way I'd return is if I got extremely bored of everything else, or I want a break from fantasy games. But the reason I usually play games is for the fantasy. This could change though, I might revisit it one day and enjoy it more than I did now, but as of now, I have no plans of continuing. If this game came to NA and EU, would I play it? Hell yes, because then maybe I'd get a better understanding of it. And I would also like to try out the PvP with decent ping. I feel that the PvP with Moonlight Blade can stand with Blade and Souls PvP as far as the competitive scene goes. Just because of the unique combat system features and the way you execute your skills and have to pay attention to the enemy's movements and blocks. If you're interested in playing this game, it really wasn't hard at all to set up. The only hard part is probably getting the QQ account and number. Since I already had one from a long time ago, I was able to skip this step. So when it comes to the pros and cons of Moonlight Blade, as far as the pros go, the game is beautiful. Huge open world with a full weather day and night cycle. The combat is amazing even though it's tab targeting, it's fast paced and the skills and combos flow nicely. The character customization allows you to make a very realistic, pretty, handsome or badass character. Now this is a pro and a con, but we'll get to that in a bit. The questing was nice because the story and cutscenes kept things exciting. Also the optimization was pretty good. I had no hiccups, no crashes, the game felt very smooth, though there was a lot of pop in. And as I said earlier, the soundtrack was very good as well. As far as the cons go, this could just be me, but the character movement felt a bit stiff. The character customization is very limiting. Maybe this is because they don't want green characters running around and just want to keep things more realistic. I don't know, but not being able to mess with the body or hair color is game breaking for some people. There's also no mob variation. Now maybe this changes later down the line, but from what I've seen and heard, it's nothing but humans. And questing was kill this group of guys after this group of guys, and it kind of just made things a bit boring. So it's not a bad game, but it wasn't as exciting as I thought it would be. But I'd definitely give it a try if it came over to the west, and who knows, seeing the game super active, playing it with better ping, and experiencing PvP, maybe I'd fall in love with it. So let me know what you guys think about Moonlight Blade. Have you tried it, or do you plan on giving this game a try? Let me know in the comment section and I'll catch you guys down there. Until the next one, see you soon friends.